on him in whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have never not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So this is how faith works. This is how the gospel works. It is not written for us in the sky. It is not uh, instinct built within us. It is something that must be heard from somebody else. Somebody must give to you the gospel. And so it is important to have your first blank there in your notes. It is important to have a basic plan of how to give someone the gospel. <clears throat> we talked last time about praying for God to give you opportunities to be a witness. To bring people into your path that are just ready to hear uh, the message that, that God has given to you. And when the Lord gives you those opportunities, you've got to be prepared with an idea of where you're going. And what verses am I going to use? What, I, what concepts need to be taught here? What, what do they need to hear in order to understand and believe the gospel and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the goal. And uh, I think for far too long, uh, the work of, of being a witness and leading people to Christ has been in the domain of preachers and missionaries. They're kind of the professional witnesses, you know. But that is not how God set it up in His Word. He wants every single believer to be equipped, to be a witness, to, to be able to share the gospel and lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this takes some preparation. And we talked about preparation a lot last time, but you think about um, as, a, as I come to the pulpit today and I'm teaching and later on I'm going to be preaching, you expect that I will have hopefully done a little bit of prep work before that, right? Uh, if I just get up and say, you know what, um, okay, let's do, let's do Luke today, you know, and I just turn and we just start talking about it and stuff, that, that's... That's not what you expect of a, of a preacher, okay? That you expect some preparation to be done so that I know what to say and I know what God has laid upon my heart for our church. And so in the same way, you can't just say, Lord, give me all these opportunities to witness and not have a clue what you're going to say when those opportunities come. You have to do a little bit of prep preparation. And that's what we're doing this morning. Uh, to, to study it out, to prepare what you're going to say, to be an effective witness is the next blank. An effective witness for Christ. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now this one is written to a pastor, but certainly applicable here as well. 2 Timothy 2.15. The Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's really what we're doing as we are giving somebody the gospel. We are taking the word of God. I don't want you to just give people some pitch, you know, that you learned down at the Baptist church. That, that's not what this is about. This is about giving people the word. And we need to be able to rightly divide the word. And the only way that you're going to rightly divide the word is if you take some time to study it and figure out how to say what God wants for you to say. So let's talk about um, going door to door, which we do at times, uh, and uh, like to do this obviously during the summertime and when the weather's nice. When it's 30 below, people tend to not want to visit very long at the doorstep. That just doesn't work out that way. And so during the summertime, we go out and we try to be a witness and invite people to church. So number one is uh, your introduction and invitation. Invitation. With a door to door visit, immediately as soon as they open the door you introduce yourself you introduce the church okay so you say hello there i'm preston and uh, this is my wife karen or whoever happens to be coming with me that day and uh, we're from northwoods baptist church just want to invite you to our services today so immediately you're telling them who you are you're telling them who you are with because uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of times when somebody from a different cult or something will come to your door, uh, it's like pulling teeth to get to figure out who they are. I mean, you know who they are, you know who they're with, 
but they won't tell you because they know that there's this negative connotation with their name and people don't want to talk to them and stuff. And so they'll, they'll beat around the bush and they'll ask you questions and they'll try to lead you down this path of a conversation without ever, without ever telling you who they are. Uh, that is not how we want to be. We're not trying to be sly here. We are very upfront. We are from Northwoods Baptist Church and some will have a good perception of that. Some may not have a good perception of that. I can't control what their perception is, but we're going to be out in front and we're going to say we're from Northwoods Baptist church and we just wanted to invite you to our services this Sunday and uh, then you then you say um, uh, we're you know we're uh, out, you can say it a million different ways but you can say we're out in the neighborhood today letting people know about our church inviting them to our services and usually um, at this point I'm also handing them the card okay so you put it right out there so they're seeing the name as well as hearing the name and usually people will grab it, you know, and take it from you. And then they're looking it over and so on. And they're, they're, maybe they'll ask a question, maybe they won't. But it'll just be silence for just a second. You don't want awkward silences and pauses and things. And so you, you, you can ask them, do you have a church home where you regularly attend? And people are going to have obviously different answers to that. Um, some people may say, yes, yes, I do have a church that I go to, and they'll tell you what it is. Uh, maybe they won't tell you what it is. I don't know. They'll just say, yeah, yeah, I go to church. And uh, hope what you're shooting for there is you're, you're trying to, um, <clears throat> well, get them to consider church, but you're also trying to figure out where they're coming from religiously, okay? What is their background? If they tell you, yeah, I go to St. Philip's, you know they're a Catholic, and you have a general idea of what they believe and where they're coming from. They say, no, I go, I go to uh, Calvary Lutheran. Okay, you, you, can, you can kind of peg where they're, where they're coming from religiously. And that's, that's the goal there is you're trying to figure out where they are and if they have a church that they go to. And if they do have a church that they go to, uh, don't denigrate their church. Okay, they're going to church. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> it's a good thing for people to go to church. And so you don't say, oh, that's a, that, that church stinks. You need to come to our church. No, that's not... A, that's not what we're doing, okay? No, you, you say, well, that's, that's wonderful. Church attendance is a very important thing. I'm glad that you have a church that you're, you're able to attend regularly. And then sometimes if you just got to read the body language. If the conversation is done and the time is done, don't stick your foot in the door and make them talk to you if they don't want to. If, if that's it, say thank you for your time. Uh, if you ever get a chance, love to have as your guest, but I'm glad you have a church home. Something like that. Just leave it on a friendly basis, and we're not trying to steal anybody from their church. Um, but you can, if it seems like the conversation is going somewhere and you want to have some sort of a lead in, uh, a lot of times we get stuck right there <clears throat> and somebody says, yeah, I go to church. But we know that's not the end game, don't we? We know that as witnesses that if somebody is going to the Jehovah's Witness Church or the Catholic Church or some of these, you know, some of these churches that there's a good chance that they have not heard the gospel as, as it is presented in the Word of God. And that's partly why we're out there. So you can't just always stop with, oh, well, they had a church. There's nothing I can do about it. No, we want to further engage people in the gospel. And so one Maybe one phrase that you could use to turn it a little bit is, is to say, well, that's, that is wonderful. Church attendance is so important to, to be able to go to church and have that as a part of your life. But something that's even more important to that than, than going to church is knowing where you're going when this life is over. And, and you can just kind of lead right into that and say that's another reason why we're out here today is, is just to make sure, do you know for sure, and you can flip the card over or say you know, on the back of your card there's a question, do you know for sure that heaven will be your home? And you can kind of twist it, that, that conversation. We're going to talk about turning, uh, turning the conversation here in a minute. But <clears throat> if they're, this is just if they want to talk, if they seem open to it. Uh, that's, that's great. It's good to engage them a little bit further. Next page. Um, many will answer that they don't, do not go to a church. All right. So you say, do you have a church home that you go to here? And they may offer a reason or they may just say, no, no, really don't. Um, sometimes I'll say, oh, really? Were, were you raised in church at all? Uh, any church background? Because again, I'm looking for where are they coming from? What's their belief structure? You know? Um, how, how, am I, how can I best point them and direct them towards the gospel? Um, 
Uh, I've, I've uh, fallen into this before a long time ago, you know, I was new to witnessing and stuff when somebody said, no, I don't have a church, because a lot of times people would say, yeah, I've got a church, they're not interested, whatever. And so somebody says, no, I don't have a church. I'm like, oh, great, we, you know, what, what, we, I've got a church for you, you know, you, let's go. Well, if they're not in church, probably it's because they're not looking for a church, right? They're just, they're just not interested most of the time if they're not going to church. Now, now obviously, we're there to invite them. We want to uh, say, boy, we'd sure love to have you as our guest. Um, but uh, uh, and tell them where you're located. Show them the map. Um, there, there will be some uh, few that say, you know, I don't have a church right now. I'm looking for one, or I've been thinking about this, or I just moved into town. Those are gold, you know. That's where you want to really say, boy, we would sure love to have you uh, come visit and be our guest this Sunday. Um, maybe even you can uh, f follow up and say, would it be all right if, uh, if our pastor stopped by sometime, told you a little bit more about our church? That, those, are, those are good opportunities to try to, to gain a follow-up visit or something like that and emphasize that you want them to come. But... Uh, um, yeah, try to get those prospects. So, um, number two is turning the conversation. It's okay to have a little bit of small talk. You know, I've said before, if they've got some nice tomatoes growing right there, comment on their tomatoes. If they got a nice car, you can tell they invest a lot of time in, comment on the car. If their camo is out, you know, getting sent free, talk about hunting a little bit, you know, that's okay. And it makes them feel like you're a, a real human being and not just this, you know, church salesman person. And uh, it ought to be genuine, but after a brief uh, small talk, you should attempt to turn the conversation toward the gospel. Again, a lot of times, I'll, uh, as I introduce the church, I'll say, now, if you, if you look on the back of that car, there's a very important question and it says, do you know for sure that heaven will be your home? And I'll try to uh, turn it that way. And so get to the point of what we're doing. Obviously, we want them to come to church, but more than anything, we want them to hear the gospel. That's what we're out there supposed to be doing. Um, you, can, you can say it like this. If they say, yeah, I've been um, at the Methodist church my whole life. Uh, I was raised there, been very involved, very active, very happy with my church. I say, that's wonderful. I'm glad that you have a church home. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. In, in, in all your years at the church there, um, has there ever been a point in time when you knew that you were 100% sure that you were going to heaven? You know, you can, you can just kind of ask um, in those ways and talk about, um, try to get to their testimony, not just a church overview, but do you know? And that's where we're going to be headed with the conversation. Now, a lot of times, um, what, I, what we want to get to the point uh, with organized outreach is that we're doing it just in our everyday lives as well. Um, when we come out on Tuesday nights and we go door knocking, that's a start, but that's not the end game. I mean, we need to be witnesses all the time, everywhere that we are, always on the lookout for those opportunities. And so if you're not knocking on a door on a cold call, which I admit they're awkward, right? They're, those are awkward conversations at times, but we do it because, well, for one thing, it's biblical. Acts 20, 20 says that they preach the gospel house to house, right? And that's, that's something that we ought to do. Uh, but uh, we, we ought to be witnesses uh, at all times. So maybe with a neighbor that you've been building a, a rapport with or a, a co-worker or a friend or an old childhood friend even, a family member. There's, you have to pray and watch and make an effort to turn the conversation, to steer it in a, in a different way. And I, I'm, I wrote down a couple of thoughts. Maybe mention something that happened at church, number one there. Mention something that happened at church. And if they are church going, they might respond with something they recently did at church. That's just usually how it goes. Um, I have a little bit of an advantage at this because they always ask me, like I ask you, what do you do? All right, I'm a pastor. <laughs> and it's, so then people have questions about that, and it's great. I, I've automatically steered the conversation just by my occupation, you know. Um, but you have to look for other ways to do that and, and maybe talk about, yeah, uh, boy, last week we had VBS at church, and a um, couple, couple weeks ago we had a baptism, and that can just spark curiosity, and it lets them know. You're a church-going person. If they didn't know that before, let them know you're a Christian. Um, 
And if they respond with something regarding their church, then you're already going down that path. It's, it's going great. Um, mention some, something in your life that's going on where you knew, number two, uh, you know God was helping you or blessing you in a special way. Um, somebody says, hey, congrats on such and such, new house or whatever. Say, yeah, the Lord really blessed. Just that one phrase lets them know, this is a Christian I'm talking to. And it, it, it helps them, uh, uh, I don't know, it, and they, they, they might get curious about that. And, and over time, you build that, that idea. And uh, just a, a, another phrase, like, well, praise the Lord. That's not something people go around saying all the time, okay? We say it a lot here in church, but you, you don't hear that in, in everyday talk. So try to say, yeah, yeah, you know, God was really looking out for us there. I know that his hand was in that. And try to bring God into the dialogue. Uh, whatever the topic might be, anything, tr always look for the detour. Look for the detour. Where is it? Where is it? We were driving on unfamiliar territory here this week, and I know we have GPSs and phones and all that stuff, but Siri was giving us fits and not cooperating very well. And uh, I knew what I, what, the, what I was looking for, and I'm, I'm, we're on a big road, and I'm picturing this big sign. There was a little teeny tiny sign. It said Lewis Avenue with a little arrow. Of course, we blew right by it. All right, but what's the point? Be on the lookout for that detour. What, where's my opportunity? Where's my opportunity? Because we, we ought to have a single-minded focus when we are talking with people that we are not sure if they, were, they are saved or if we're even sure that they are lost. We, we ought to have this fo focus that my, my main goal here, yes, to befriend them, to be kind, to be polite, but most of all, my job, why God left me here, and your job, is to be a witness. I want this person to be able to hear the gospel. And even if I can just get in one little phrase about God, that leads in that right direction. If you're talking to a friend or a family member, I'll tell you right now, these are some of the hardest to, to witness to, okay? Um, most important because they're dear to your heart. You love them, but sometimes there's just this great wall of awkwardness, and it just it's so hard to get the conversation going, uh, the blank says, towards spiritual matters. So pray for this person pray that an opportunity will come up if you know uh, you're going to be around that person or around the family pray god give me some time alone with so and so and, and try to make that happen where you can pull somebody to the side because if you're in a family reunion you're not going to stand up on the table and say okay family everybody i want you to listen to me here i got something to say that's not going to happen okay but if you bump into the person over by the punch bowl, you might be able to strike up a conversation and lead something, get something going. There's always a way to try to get it going towards spiritual matters. And so seize that opportunity. And I wrote here, it's only as awkward as you make it. And that's honest. It really is. Uh, and most of it is in our head. And so you can just say something like number two. Say, you know, I've been meaning to ask you a question for some time now. And usually they'll be very curious about that and say, oh, sure, what? If you're their family, They're, they care about you the way that uh, you care about them, and and you say, I, I've been meaning to ask you a question, and uh, then you just you just out with it, okay? If something happened to you, are are you a hundred percent sure that you'd go to heaven? And they might be taken back by it, you know. But at least you've you've done it, you know. And there's there's no maybe there's no delicate way to do it, but you just throw it out there. You can even start with your testimony. I've been at, in family situations where somebody offered me a drink or whatever, you know, have to have, have a beer, and uh, they know I'm a pastor. They know all this, but, that, you know, anyway, it doesn't stop them. Have, have a beer, and uh, no, no, I don't, I don't drink. And, um, you can, and you can follow up with that and say, you know what, I don't drink anymore. Um, I got saved a couple of years back, and the Lord's really done a work in my life, and I'm trying to live my life according to the Bible now. And according to the Bible, I, I, I can't do that. So that's, that's why I don't. That, that testimony is a powerful one. It'll cause them to think, and it might, might make some people a little bit mad because you're, you're incriminating their lifestyle, and that's not what you're trying to do. It's not holier-than-thou type of thing. You're just trying to please the Lord. And, and if they have already seen a change in your life, they've already witnessed it and then you start talking about that change don't be surprised if they follow up with some more questions and uh, they're they're going to be interested how many of you were drawn towards salvation by watching the life of somebody else 
raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You see, you see something happen and, and the Lord do something great in somebody's life. A, power, a testimony is just a, such a powerful tool, especially, as I mentioned, if they've seen some major changes. That's the blank there, changes in your life. Um, does, ha, do you have anything that you'd like to maybe contribute here? Because I've just jotted down a couple little thoughts of how uh, you might be able to steer the conversation. Do you want to share a quick thought of, of how you've gotten into a spiritual conversation with someone and how it got to that point? Anybody got any thoughts about that? Karen, speak up. By what you wear. Oh, by what you wear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? Anything? Any conversation you've had? Or okay. I know when I was on the plane with this young man um, a couple of weeks ago, um, we were just talking about what we were doing in Denver. That's typical plain talk, you know, what are you, what are you doing in town? And I said, I was here for a, uh, a, a church camp, and that got his interest going. And he said, oh, I was here with a, a missions trip and, and all this stuff. And, and immediately it just started steering towards conversation, and then it was, well, what church are you with? And, and, and background, and uh, leading down these things and getting, getting to some of these questions, okay? Anybody else? Anything that you've He kept throwing his props up there, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yep. That we all have have those people in our lives that we're just praying for, and give give me another opportunity. Help me to help me to do that. And I've got people that I like to witness to, but they they just shut you down. No, we're not talking about that, you know. And then they just don't want anything to do with it, and that's that's up to them, but. It's our job to try. So um, key questions is what we're headed into next. Number three, key questions. And I've alluded to this already a couple of times. But one, as soon as the conversation starts to shift that direction, questions are the best way to teach. Okay? If you're just making um, declarative statements to people and you're just saying, here's the way it is, here's the way it is, you're not this way, so you're not saved, you're going to hell. Okay, that's not, that's not a good witnessing tactic, okay? Uh, we want to ask questions. Probe people's thoughts. See where they're coming from. Uh, this allows them to come to the discovery and the awareness of truth without you forcing it down their throat. Cause, just, just ask them questions, sincere questions. So here's, here's how you do it. Could I ask you a question? If something were to happen to you today, do you know for sure where you would go? And, and the insinuation there, you, depends on the setting. If, if I'm at a hospital bed, I'm not going to say, you know, if you were to die today, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's just t tactful ways to do this. Uh, you know, and I'm on the plane, I don't say, you know what, if this plane goes down, if this plane goes down, are you ready? You know, I, some people might be so bold, I, I'm not that way. But you, in some way, you ask them, you know, if, if God forbid something were to happen to you, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? Their response is going to tell you a lot. Okay? Um, response number one is, um, I'd like to think I would go to heaven, but I'm not 100% sure. And basically they're saying, I, I'm not, I don't think anybody can be that sure. Because that's what most religion teaches you, right? That you just do the best you can, you, do, you work hard at it, and hopefully when it's all said and done, your good kind of outweighs your bad, and he'll let you in. And then they say, well, I sure hope so, but I can't say I'm 100% sure. Most people will think along those lines. Uh, another response, they'll just say, uh, I don't know. 
Never thought about that before. I, I have no idea where I would go if I died. And so at that point, you can take them to 1 John 5.13. Let's all turn there. And this is a verse you ought to just memorize, and you can just say it before you ever pull out a Bible or anything like that. But you basically, you're going to tell them this. The Bible says that it is possible to know for sure that you're going to heaven. 1 John 5.13 just be able to quote this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may, what? Know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So emphasize the word know. These things, not just in 1 John, but these things, the Bible is written that ye may know that you have eternal life. You don't have to wonder. And, and it, so it's possible for us to know these things from the Word of God. He gives us the answers. He gives us exactly what we need to know we have eternal life. Would it be all right if I took just a couple of minutes and showed you from the Bible what God says about how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven? Just like that. And at that point, they're going to answer you either yes, no, or maybe some other time, you know, this isn't a good time for me. And then you say, okay, when is? <laughs> right? And, and you try to get a better time. We're not trying to be sneaky. We're not trying to be salesmen. We are genuinely trying to give people the gospel and to question in their mind, do you know for sure? Because this is the type of question that people lay awake at night considering and contemplating. What comes after this? Where will I be? They go to a funeral. Where's uncle so-and-so? Where will I be when I lie in that casket? These are the questions that de lurk deeply and people try to mask them. They try to stay busy. They try to st have a noisy life, you know, and, and keep their hands going and their minds going with a thousand different things so they don't have to think about this. But let's, we're going to bring it up from the, from the depths and put it right there in front of them and say, are you sure? And if they say no, they say, well, you can be sure. It is possible to know. And I can show you how from the Bible. Those are, that's, that's a great thing. Here's another response. If you say, are you 100% sure you go to heaven when you die? They might say, yeah, I am. I am absolutely sure that I, that's, uh, that's where I would go. And to that you say, that is wonderful. I am so glad uh, to hear that. But I always follow up with a second key question there okay and the second key question is this can I ask you what do you base that upon meaning you can kind of paint this scenario for them and say let's say that you're standing at the gate of heaven and you are face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ and he says to you why should I let you into my heaven what are you going to tell him and that's a hard question to answer. Because that's just something we are not trained to think about. We don't instinctively figure out how to articulate that. And, and this is where people will really be squirming, you know, trying to figure out the answer. And uh, to be honest with you, even if they know the answer, even if they know in their hearts that they're saved, it's a hard thing to articulate how you know that. But this is such an important point to get to. Because if somebody, you want to know if somebody has a false hope for their salvation. That they are trusting, if they are trusting in something that cannot hold them up. And so what their answer to that question right there, what do you base that on? That will tell you, in a sentence or two, exactly what they are trusting for their salvation. And you'll know that either that's biblical or that's not biblical. And pretty quickly, you're going to figure out that this person is either, either has a Bible testimony of salvation or they don't. Uh, letter B, um, in the middle, you'll know uh, if they have a biblical testimony of salvation by grace through faith alone or if they are trusting in their works in some way to save them. Now, I'm not looking for magical words here, obviously. It's not some code that we're going for. I'm just looking for what are you trusting in? Are you, and if their response is baptism 
or um, oh, I, I, I believe in all that, or um, you know, I've tried to be a good person and keep the Ten Commandments. All those things, you're talking about works, okay? It's what you have done. If, if it's all about that, and I've, I, oh, I've, I've always been a Christian, okay, that's not a biblical response. And you don't have to come out and say it like that, but you know in your mind, okay, I'm dealing with a lost person here. Because in their heart, they are trusting in something other than what the Bible says we are to trust in for our salvation. And that tells you how to proceed. Now, if they tell you, um, you know, when I, was, when I was 17 years old, I was, uh, I was, in, I was reading my Bible, and uh, it's like, the, the, all, all that I had heard in Sunday school and, and some of these things had happened but everything just kind of came together and clicked and I understood that I was a sinner before God and I called upon him to be my savior and, and I've been saved ever since and if Jesus asked me why should I let you into my heaven I'll say because I put all my trust in you and you promised that you'd, that you'd give me heaven as my home you know if, if, if you get from them that they are trusting alone in Jesus Christ for their salvation, and they have called upon him to be their savior. Oh man, you 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 can rejoice with them and just say that is that is wonderful. I'm so glad to hear you say that that that, that heaven is your home, that you've got that settled. I'm so excited for you. Maybe 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 you can wrap it up just by saying, is there anything I can pray for you about? Or you know, people love love it when you when you just share a word of prayer with them and maybe have a word of prayer and rejoice over their salvation uh, and uh, be sure to invite them to church again. If they're very happy at their church, that's fine. But otherwise, just say, you know what? We would sure love to have you as our guest this Sunday. Would you come? Uh, and, and just leave it at that. And uh, we're not going to try to cram this whole thing down their throat. Uh, obviously, if they're saved, they've already got it settled. They don't need to go through it all again. Sometimes I've, I've run into a situation where somebody is genuinely saved. They have a testimony of salvation. But certain circumstances in life have come. And doubts have come. Because it's possible for a Christian to doubt. Okay? To doubt whether you are 100% sure. Not every saved person is 100% sure that they are saved. Just, that's just the, the nature of how the devil works and he attacks our minds and we have doubts. And so at that point, what I'll do is I'll say, you know what, can I, can I just walk you through this, what the Bible says? And at the end of all of it, and you get them to Romans 10, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you invite them, you know, you say, have you ever, have you ever done this? Have, as the Bible describes this, have you turned from sin and believed on him and called out to him? Have you done this? And if they say, yeah, I've done that, then you can say, then according to the word of God, you are saved. And you can be 100% sure. And you just give them that assurance that their salvation is secure and that it is biblical. And it's not based on our feelings. It's not based on uh, the stuff that they have done, their sin. They, you can't ever lose your salvation. You know, just try to, try to reemphasize to them that assurance of what, they have, uh, of what their salvation means. If they respond with what you feel to be an unbiblical answer, their works, their heritage, whatever it might be, just answer it like this. Would it be all right if I took a moment uh, to just show you what the Bible says about these things, about salvation, and, and how, we're, how, how we can know for sure that we're on, way, on our way to heaven? And, and you just, you're not saying that's wrong because instantly defenses go up, the wall goes up, and all of that. You just say, hey, that's, that's neat. Would it be all right if I just showed you from the Bible? What the Bible has to say about these things. And, and if people have a respect for the Word of God, they'll, they'll be okay with that. And you guide them through that. And as you guide them through the, the Scriptures, which we're going to get into next time, of which Scriptures are important to deal with. And, and um, you'll learn over time how to be flexible with somebody from this background or that background, things that they're going to really have to struggle through and work through. Um, but, but just try to get it to the point where they're, they're willing to open up the Bible and hear the gospel, and as they hear the authentic gospel of grace through faith alone, it will become apparent that what they were trusting in is insufficient. It, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't hold water. It, do, it, will not, it will not get them to heaven. They, are trust, they have propped up their eternal security with all of these sticks that cannot hold them. And so part of our job is to take the scriptures and knock those things out. Not in a violent way, not in an unkind way, 
but to show them, no, that's, that is untrue. That is, that is not biblical. Here's what the Bible says about it, to show them that there is just one truth, one pillar, and that is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and their, their repentance and belief upon that. That's it. There's no works involved. And so if at any point they decline or they pull the plug on this or uh, whatever, invite them to church again. If they indicate it's not a good time, uh, letter E, the blank there, ask them when would be a better time to come back. Set up an appointment, write down their name and address. These are very important things. If you don't write it down, uh, hey, I don't know about you, once I sleep at night, pretty much all the information has been dumped, okay? And you've got you've to take notes on these things and try to follow up with them. I, um, I gave my number to this young man on the plane, and he said that he was going to text me his number so I could follow up with him it never happened so I made a mistake there I should have written it down I should have got his number right there so I could follow up because the devil has a way of stealing the seed and stealing away the urgency of the moment and they need somebody they need witnesses they need people to come and bring these spiritual things back up to the forefront because otherwise they just get shoved all back to the back burner and people can go long periods of time without ever considering these things and it's our job to keep it before them if, if they're genuinely interested and they give you the go-ahead, like, yeah, okay. You say, can I open the Bible and show you what the Bible has to say about this? And they say, yeah, 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 let's do that. Okay, um, make sure that you're ready for that <laughs> with where you're going to go next. Okay, so, so you might not want to put this into action immediately this week because uh, if you get to that point and they say, yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear that. And you go, oh boy, I've never had anybody take me up on that. You know? <laughs> I don't know exactly where to go from here. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you have a plan and you are prepared on what, what you're going to say and which verse you're going to turn to immediately. You ought to know immediately. So the first verse in this whole thing is 1 John 5.13. Try to memorize that verse. Okay? If you can't memorize the whole verse, at least memorize the core of it where he says... Uh, and you can even do like, in my mind, sometimes I put like a dot, dot, dot in there uh, and, uh, to get to the crucial points. Like, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Something like that. And, and you, if you can just get that core, that, that the Bible is written, that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13. Uh, it's right there. He wrote it down. You can know for sure. That's an important one. Try to get that down this week and uh, continue working on your testimony, writing out your testimony. I don't know if anybody, did anybody else have a busy week this week? Okay, I, I did. All right, yeah. And uh, probably you're going to have another one this week. But I want to challenge you again for a little assignment here that will help you immensely going forward as a witness. Be able to articulate your own testimony and how God saved your soul and what happened. And it'll, it'll fill you with new assurance. It'll fill you with boldness and, and uh, joy at, to think back on what God did for you and how he brought you to that point. And uh, writing that thing out, that just equips you to be able to share the gospel, to share your testimony with somebody else. And that's what we're talking about doing, learning how to share our witness. Okay, so we've done a lot of prep work, okay, getting up to actually sharing the gospel with somebody. But sometimes that's what it takes, doesn't it? Sometimes it takes years of praying for somebody and trying to steer that conversation and trying to live a life that backs up what you're trying to show them. It takes years sometimes before you ever get to the point where you can do this and you open up the Bible and show them. But we need to be ready, don't we? We need to be ready. And uh, let's, uh, let's just pray, continue to pray for God to make us bold witnesses, uh, to give us the words to speak, uh, to give us those opportunities, because this is our job, church. Okay? It's, it's all of our job. You don't pay me to do this. You pay me to teach you to do this. Okay? That's, that's kind of how it works, really. And we come in here, and this is, this is kind of the rally point where we get excited and we get, we get equipped. And then we go out and we live these things out day to day. And so that's what I want, hope to be able to teach you uh, through this series. Let's uh, have a quick word of prayer. Father, thank you for this uh, study on being a witness. Because we know, Lord, that as excited as we are about our own salvation, that being an effective witness doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen automatically. It's something that requires much preparation and prayer and 
and study. And so, Lord, as we uh, go through these things, I pray that we would not be wasting our time, but that these are tools and techniques